Today we're going to be discussing absolute extrema on a closed interval. So before we proceed, first recall what absolute extrema are. So in the previous video we had mentioned the definition of what is an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. So recall that a function f has an absolute maximum so I've just used shorthand there, so it has an absolute maximum at some point A if the following is satisfied, if f at A is greater than or equal to f at x for all x in the domain of the function f. And similarly, f has an absolute minimum at x equals to a if we have that f at a is less than or equal to f at x for all x values in the domain of your function f. Now the extreme value theorem which I have stated here is actually a result which tells us under which conditions we will be able to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. And those conditions are that the function must be continuous on a closed interval. So recall the definition of continuous. We had covered a section on this. So a function is continuous at a point, if it is defined at that point, if the limit as x approaches that point of the function exists, and in addition, if the limit as x approaches that value um, is equal to the value of the function at that point. So we had 1, f at a is defined, 2, the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists, and 3, that the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals f at a. So that is the definition of continuity at a point, but now we're talking about continuity on a closed interval. So that function will be continuous on the interval if it is continuous at all points in the closed interval and by a closed interval we refer to an interval of the following form where it consists of all values x between a and b including a and b. Right, so again the extreme value theorem tells you that if a function is continuous on some closed interval then the function has both a maximum and minimum value on that interval. So in particular if we work with all values in the domain of f, so if the domain of f was a closed interval for which f was continuous in it, then we would have that f has an absolute maximum and f has an absolute minimum by virtue of the extreme value theorem. So now your next question would be, how do we find uh, the absolute extrema on a closed interval? So suppose that you now have a function that is continuous on some closed interval a b then what is the procedure so step one would be to firstly find the critical values of your function so how do you find critical values of your function you compute the derivative and you find all x values of the derivative of f for which f prime is undefined or for which f prime equals to zero so we want those x values Right, next, step two. Once you've found the critical values, what do you then need to do? You then evaluate f, so your original function f of x, at the critical values so value of values found in step one and at the endpoints of your interval a and b. So at x equals to a and x equals to b. And finally in step 3 you will then find your absolute extrema in the following way. So the maximum, the absolute maximum of your function f is the highest value obtained in step 2 and 
Similarly, the absolute minimum of your function f is going to be the least or the lowest value obtained in step 2. So it's a very simple procedure for us to follow, a nice three-step procedure that has, been on, uh, that has been outlined. So let's now apply this procedure to an example. Right, so here is our example. Find the absolute extrema for the following function f of x equals to x squared minus 4x plus 5 over the closed interval 1 and 4. So step 1 is to find the critical values of this function. So we now need to compute f prime of x. So using our general rules, what is the derivative of f of x? It is 2x minus 4 plus 0. And I'm now going to, to write this in a, in a simpler form. So I'm going to factorize. So this now gives me, I factor out 2 and I'm left with x minus 2. So remember I need to solve f prime of x equals to 0. So what is the x values for which f prime of x equals 0? It is clear that in here x equals to 2. So that means x equals to 2 is a critical value. In addition, was f prime of x undefined for any x values? Clearly not, because f prime of x was a polynomial. So we could not find a critical value using that condition. So that means the only critical value of um, the function f is x equals to 2. Right, step 2, moving on. We now need to evaluate f of x at each critical value and at the endpoints of that closed interval. So we need to find out what is f at 2, what is f at 1, and what is f at 4. Right, so substituting that into the original function, plugging in 2, that's 2 squared minus 8 plus 5, we get a value of 1. Right, and substituting in x equals to 1, that's 1 minus 4 plus 5, I get a value of 2. And then finally, substituting in x equals to 4 into that, uh, 4 squared 16 minus 16 plus 5 gives me a value of 5. So that's step two complete. And then in step three, the highest value amongst um, all of the values obtained in step two is going to be your absolute maximum. So the maximum of f on the closed interval, interval one four, is going to be, so where was the highest value obtained? It was this one. So this is our max. Right, and that was at x equals to 4 and y equals to 5. And the maximum of f on that interval is 5. And similarly, the minimum of our function f on the closed interval, 1, 4, is the lowest among those that, we, that was obtained in step 2. And this was the lowest. So this is the min. And so it is 1. Right. And so that is how you would use your three-step procedure in order to find extrema for functions that were continuous on closed intervals.